Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vuforia Live. In this session, you'll be learning about Vuforia Engine and how you can use it to help create AR applications to engage your customers. I'm Aliana Iliadis, the Product Marketing Manager for Vuforia Engine. And I'm Brad Pitzer, the Director of Product Management for Vuforia Engine. And we're excited to introduce you to the product and kick off today's session. Euphoria Engine is a powerful, widely used software for creating branded augmented reality applications that can be deployed on the largest range of phones, tablets, and AR headsets and smart glasses, making it easy to get your experience in the hands of your employees or customers. Its development flexibility, best-in-class computer vision, and wide breadth of AR target types make it the leader in published applications around the world in industries like manufacturing, automotive, and even consumer goods. And that cutting edge technology doesn't stop at Vuforia Engine. It's used as the foundation for the rest of PTC's AR portfolio that you'll be learning about today. Here's a brief overview of our AR portfolio. We offer a range of products that are either solution centric or platform centric and range from providing remote assistance, knowledge capture, 3D work instructions to custom branded applications. Vuforia Engine with over a decade of innovation under its belt is the technology that powers it all. Euphoria Engine also has a thriving ecosystem of developers, and we recently announced the milestone of having over 1 million registered developers on our online community. In celebration of reaching 1 million and to thank our developers, we held an AR Creators Contest. I'll talk more about that contest and announce the winners later in this session. Speaking of today's session, we'll be going over our wide breadth of features and functionalities offered in Euphoria Engine and the value we're seeing our customers achieving. We'll also be touching on the industries we're seeing the most impact with AR, and we'll walk you through a demo of our most recent innovation, Area Targets. After that, we'll announce the winners of our AR contest and end the session with our Vuforia 10 announcement. Now, to kick this all off, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Brad. Thanks, Aliana. As she mentioned earlier, Vuforia Engine has a wide range of target types and allow customers to place content wherever they need it. Whether you're looking to place 3D models on a ground plane or create proximity aware AR navigation through your factory, Euphoria Engine offers the leading tracking, stability, and overall performance. As our base features, targets like ground plane and image targets are not new to the market, but are still some of the most fastest and most effective ways to create an AR experience. With ground plane, you can simply place content on a horizontal or vertical surface in an environment such as a floor, wall, a tabletop, allowing people to view AR experiences just about anywhere. With image targets, any image can be used to make an advertisement in magazines and brochures come to life in a world of 3D. We even have cloud recognition services that can be used in cases where you might have to recognize thousands or even millions of images from a single application. The key difference here is the computer vision technology powering these standard target types. Euphoria Engine's performance and stability is unmatched. That same computer vision technology we use in our image targets, we use to support many other area, other target types and even more use cases. Aliana will touch on those now. Thanks, Brad. So cylinder targets, multi-targets, and view marks all boast the same high performance and stability found in our image targets and, like Brad said, in all of our target types. Cylinder targets allow applications to detect and track images wrapped into cylindrical shapes. You know, this is perfect for labels on wine bottles or cans. Take a look at what 19 Crimes and Coca-Cola have done with our cylinder targets. These applications have helped drive customer engagement and differentiate their brands. Multi-targets provide all the benefits of an image target, but on multiple sides of a geometric shape. This is great for packaged goods where you can show unique AR experiences on each side of a product. One of our customers, Merge Labs, leverages this target type for their Merge Cube product, which has interactive three-dimensional games and experiences. Finally, view marks are really a next generational barcode. They give you the flexibility to uniquely track thousands of targets, customized and brand conscious designs while simultaneously encoding data and acting as a trackable AR target. 
This is perfect for toy companies that have a large range of similar products that they want to differentiate and have AR experiences on. But Vuforia Engine offers more than just standard target types. Our Vuforia team has created more advanced technologies for building AR applications, specifically with model targets and area targets. There is no doubt that the pandemic has changed the way we live and especially how we interact with the outside world. The shopping experience just isn't the same anymore. Sometimes we avoid traditional brick and mortar stores, but online shopping doesn't always give us the shopping experience that we need, especially when making a major purchase such as buying a car. As our most robust target type, Euphoria model targets can be used to place an AR experience over physical objects, such as a toy, a car, a boat, or even bigger. With or without a salesperson, it helps you engage and connect with your customers as they visualize and interact with your product and increase their purchase confidence. AR applications can also be valuable in post-sales or as a product companion, where customers can continue to learn new things about the product through AR and increase their purchase satisfaction. Engage, connect, and deliver satisfying purchase journeys to your customers using Euphoria Engine model targets. Model targets utilize the actual CAD model that was used to design a product, whether it be a coffee maker, a car, or even a boat. Using the actual digital model of the object to generate the target gives a level of accuracy not seen by any other target type. Every intricate detail of your product can be used to recognize and track your digital augmentations. This can be especially helpful when showing a variety of configurations such as color, accessories, and different variations of your product. Model targets could also be used to show information on an object with pinpoint accuracy. For example, showing each of the functions of the button on a car instrument panel. But consider also a manufacturing setting where you have the context of your data directly on the objects can greatly increase the efficiency, safety, and productivity of your frontline workers. Operators can get step-by-step -step instructions on how to safely operate a machine much of what you will be seeing in the presentation throughout the day today. Using model targets, users can point their phone or eyewear at an object and Euphoria Engine will recognize and snap to the object, allowing your digital content to be closely tied to the physical object from any side. If the device is ever pointed away from the object, Euphoria Engine's device tracker will do everything it can to maintain the position of the object until it's back in the view. Based on your use case, model targets can be created and used in many different ways. To start, you can create model targets with a guide view that can prompt a user to approach an object from a specific angle to start an, an experience. This can be very useful when you can predict the angle of approach of the user, for example, a machine up against a wall or a dashboard from a driver's point of view. But even better is our advanced model targets that use AI to allow the object to be recognized from any angle with no markers, no guides. It's really amazing. The deep learning process can teach the model to recognize the object from any angle with different colorizations, different lighting conditions, and different backgrounds. Objects big and small, there's nothing quite like it in the market. Markerless, guideless, extremely stable tracking on your real world objects. The digital transforming the physical world. Another amazing new feature we have deals with large spaces like offices, factories, and malls. It's our answer to the needs of spatial computing and can work in environments up to 300,000 square feet. PTC area targets allow you to build immersive AR applications in large environments simply by scanning a spatial digital replica of your space and placing 3D content within it. Area targets can enable customers to use an entire space, be it a factory floor or a retail store for persistent augmented reality experiences. Our area target generator is integrated with scanning technology companies such as Matterport, Navis, and Leica, and with more to come. We've even developed an area target creator app in the Apple App Store for iOS-based LiDAR devices. Inputting the scan into the area target, you take the resulting area target into an authoring environment and turn an entire room or a building into a canvas for augmented reality. Organizations can create indoor navigation, 
pop-up digital signage. View IoT data in the context of your factory. Visualize intelligent BIM data or showcase featured products in a retail store. Efficient and dynamic navigation through a large factory can increase productivity and more importantly, safety. For consumers, for more information, uh, in information about products they are shopping for and navigation to specific parts of a store can increase customer satisfaction and brand experience. You can point them towards sale and featured items, even filter out items that you are looking for, such as gluten-free or non-GMO, all by interacting with the user's device. With all that said, let's show you how this technology works. Aliana, can you walk us through an area target demo? Absolutely, Brad. So like Brad mentioned, area targets are created through scanning the space and creating a 3D model. This 3D model can then be turned into an area target and you can bring that environment model into Unity and place your digital content within it. Now, let's take a look at how this looks once it's published. We built an application for the PTC Corporate Experience Center in our headquarters in Boston, Massachusetts. A visitor would only need to start up the application and point it around the environment to start the experience. Right at the entrance of the CXE, a menu appears, indicating which demos are currently available for viewing. Selecting the Polaris de demo activates navigation. These arrows lead directly to the demo and start to vanish as the user progresses. AR navigation is a simple and intuitive offering and a great experience for your employees or customers. There's no guesswork involved. You can also enhance your experience by adding proximity-based content to your spaces, like in our example, indicating whether or not a office is booked or currently available. Once the user starts to approach the selected demo, the application switches over from the navigation to the object associated with the demo for a seamless experience. Area targets and the interactions shown in that video are just a sample of what's possible with Viforia Engine. There are over 1 million developers creating amazing experiences with Viforia Engine, and the videos we received for our 1 million developer contest were so great, it was hard for our judges to pick the winners. Here's a highlight reel of some of the videos that were submitted. Thank you again for everyone who entered. In the category of most innovative application, the winner is Michael Vandernort and his non-destructive urban interventions, a digital canvas application. Using city architecture to tell stories through street art without damaging the buildings is an innovative use of AR for communicating a story. Here's his video.
In the category of best student and hobbyist application, the winner is Hussan al with his Formula One AR application. Utilizing Beforia engine model targets, Hussein built an engaging application that would be perfect for a marketing event or a sales tool. Let's watch the video. Thank you again to everyone who entered and submitted these videos. And we look forward to seeing what else the amazing developer community creates. Great stuff. Thanks, Aliana. And thank you to all of our developers who submitted content for the contest. We could not have celebrated our 1 millionth registered developer without you all. With so many companies and people relying on Vuforia Engine to power their AR experiences, we know we have a big responsibility to innovate and continuously deliver for our users. And we've been doing that for over a decade. It's with that in mind, we're proud to announce the upcoming release of the Euphoria Engine 10.0. Euphoria Engine 10.0 is the result of years of research and development and will pave the way for a whole new generation of augmented reality applications. Starting with an amazing new API, that will allow users to develop apps more efficiently and much easier. This amazing new API that, will be, that we'll be introducing has been used and tested internally for some time. The new API will allow developers to create targets without the previous overhead of managing data sets and tracker life cycles. You just tell Engine what targets you want to track and Engine does the rest. You no longer have to load and activate data sets or initialize and start trackers. You can implement the same functionality as before, but with a fraction of the code. In addition, we'll be implementing new compression algorithms that will decrease model target size up to 80% of the original CAD model and advance model target size as much as 50%. As always, we are constantly making huge strides in the speed and accuracy of all of our target types, and this release will be no exception. In Vuforia Engine 10, we'll be releasing a whole host of new features. Please visit the Vuforia Engine developer portal at developer.vuforia.com to learn more. I'm very proud of the engine development team and all that we've accomplished, and I'm looking forward to seeing what people will create next. Engine 10.0 will be, will be released soon, and we can't wait to share it with you. All right, to wrap up today's session, here are a few things we'd like to leave you with. First, Vuforia Engine offers the best-in-class computer vision to deliver robust and reliable AR experiences in a variety of environments. Its wide range of features and functionalities make building branded, photorealistic experiences a reality in new or existing applications. Advanced target types like model targets and area targets provide powerful ways to create immersive experiences on both objects and spaces by leveraging 3D models. And finally, Euphoria Engine can help you improve your customer engagement and satisfaction through implementing sales and marketing applications, product companions, and brand experiences with AR. Thank you to everyone for attending the Vuforia Engine session. And with that, we are going to move off to some questions that we are going to pull from Social 27. So let's look at those. All right. So the first question here is, uh, what kind of digital eyewear does Vuforia Engine support? So the main digital eyewear that we support is we support the HoloLens 2. We support RealWear HMT1, and we support Magic Leap. Uh, and we are constantly researching and testing out new digital eyewear as they are released onto the market. Um, but those are the, the main three digital eyewear that we currently support. Uh, and you can utilize them differently depending on your use case. 
Let's see. The next question is, does area targets support multiple floors? Brad, do you want to take that one? Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, yes, if, if a scan is created uh, continuously or the area target has can been combined in a way that the floors are actually uh, accurately joined uh, together, uh, the area target will be able to track from floor to floor as you go um, between the different spaces. We've had several, several customers do this uh, successfully and, uh, and, and it's worked very well. And in some cases even, uh, we've seen them put actual like physical objects on each of the different floors sometimes uh, where they were actually able to go up in an elevator, go from floor one to let's say four, and it would recognize that object as they step off the elevator. It was actually in a hotel application, but I thought it was uh, extremely well done. Excellent, excellent. Uh, next question here is, do you need an industrial scanner to make an area target? So, so for, for larger spaces, uh, I'll take that obviously, um, for, for larger yeah. spaces, you, um, you would want to have an industrial uh, or uh, uh, LIDAR scanner for, for doing something like that. So the kind of the way we section this out is that with, um, with smaller spaces, like a, a room, let's say up to a thousand square feet, uh, we recommend using the Area Target Creator app um, that we, we developed and it's in the app store. Um, and that uses the iPhone Pro 12 and the um, iPad Pro uh, with the LiDAR scanners. Both of those have uh, LiDAR scanners on them. And you're able to actually scan a room and create a, an area target using that application. Uh, for uh, larger spaces, um, you know, maybe going up to 10,000 or more, um, we have seen a lot of people using uh, Matterport uh, to scan those spaces. Um, and in some cases, we, we do have methods of actually combining those area targets. So uh, we've seen people actually do extremely large spaces using uh, Matterport by uh, combining those area targets. And then uh, for extremely large spaces, up to 300,000 square feet that I mentioned earlier, um, people use uh, things like Navis and Leica to uh, uh, scan a, a point cloud, a digital replica of, of the spaces. And uh, that outputs a, a kind of a, a generic E57 format and uh, panoramas that we use to generate very large area targets as well. So um, that's kind of the, the recommendations for uh, the different scanners. Excellent. Uh, I see a question here. What is the difference slash advantage to using V4A Engine over V4A Studio? And, and I can take that one. So V4A Engine is really a software with a lot of flexibility. So you can build whatever type of applications that you're looking for. Uh, it's really focused on sales and marketing because you can have these branded applications. The experiences that you build can be placed within an application that you might already have in the app store. Um, and it's development flexibility in terms of being platform agnostic um, really lets you kind of leverage these other development platforms like Unity to have these photorealistic experiences. Uh, when you look at Vuforia Studio, it's really focused on the industrial enterprise. Uh, it has great connection with our other products like um, IoT data, CAD data, um, to really give you a experience that's a little more tailored to 3D work instructions, uh, service instructions, uh, and things, again, more focused on the industrial enterprise. All right, let's look for another question here. I just wanted um, to say to Paul and Matt, we're having some issues, unfortunately, but we're very much live, as, as you know, uh, I can see. Even the, uh, the entire session that we just did was live as well. Yeah. Uh, here's one. Here. Mm -hmm. Brad, what's the smallest suggested size for an area target? The smallest suggested size? Um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can do as, uh, as small as you need, uh, especially with the area target creator. Uh, it would be very simple to you know, scan just a corner of a room. We've seen people uh, do that uh, for even demonstration purposes. Our, our uh, uh, pre-sales team, uh, technical team, does uh, you know just that when they, they go into different uh, places and, and show off our technology for area targets. It's really 
effective when you're trying to show what area targets are instead of just talking about it and actually being able to show live uh, in a space that you're you're working in right now. There's no limitation for minimum, I would say. Uh, in fact, we've seen people going uh, the opposite direction, going way over our, our kind of soft limit of 300,000 square feet um, and being very, very innov innovative in how they do that. I see a question here about uh, what type of algorithms are used for Euphoria Engine. Uh, we are VSLAM based for a lot of our tracking. I don't know, Brad, if you want to expand on that at all. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. I... Uh, what type of tracking I'm... algorithms do we use in Euphoria Engine? Oh, that's uh, our, our special sauce, I guess. Um, yeah. I, I guess for, for the most part, I mean, uh, this is a, a SLAM map uh, that we are, are extracting features uh, within within that uh, using the the mesh as well as the um, the panoramas um, so there's a, a definitely a special sauce there that that uh, creates that uh, area target map from from those uh, mm -hmm. objects within the scan uh, how do area targets differ from model target recognition is it the same idea just bigger Mm, that, that's an interesting question. I, I guess from a, a high level, it's it's definitely the the same. Um, uh, you know, we're using the same technology, the same kind of feature extraction uh, to recognize different uh, elements or, or different features within the uh, area target itself and, and the model target for that matter. Uh, there's definitely different methods on how we um, optimize them and how we uh, recognize, especially when you're in a very large space, um, you kind of need uh, priors, uh, what we call priors, to kind of get a, a quick understanding, uh, a, a rough uh, understanding of where you are within that space. And uh, so, so that can be very important. It's a little bit different when you have a model target that you can actually train to be uh, you know, recognized from, from any angle. Um, Whereas uh, with, with uh, area targets, we have to do a, a variety of different things to kind of understand where you are in, within this very large space. Technology-wise, computer vision-wise, it's approximately the same. All right, we got another question here. Uh, how do you use or how do you plan to use AI for better object recognition? Um, Brad, do you want to go into how we are leveraging AI for our model targets, maybe in a little bit more detail? Sure, sure. I, I kind of uh, tried to touch it on it in the uh, the session here, but yeah. the idea is that we we take the, the CAD model, obviously, um, and that goes through a, a deep learning uh, process, and that that process basically takes your CAD model and rotates it in as many different poses that it possibly can with as many different lighting conditions, with as many different colorizations of the CAD model, with as many different background images that it can possibly come up with to create a, 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 a neural network that allows that object to be recognized in hopefully pretty much any situation um, as, you're, you know, a, as you apply it in your application for the end user. Hopefully that answered the question. Uh, is there cloud power happening behind Euphoria Engine or is it uh, local computing? Uh, it really depends on the target type you're using. We do have cloud recognition for image targets that Brad touched on uh, briefly in our presentation, um, but we also leverage local devices as well. Brad, I don't know if you want to expand on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, everything is uh, computed locally unless, uh, you know, you are using very uh, specific cloud-based uh, services. And, and we are developing, in some cases, uh, you know, cloud services for some of our other target types. But currently today, um, you can have uh, image targets uh, using cloud recognition. And the reason you might do something like that is that you have so many images in a database that you need to be able to recognize. So you could think of um, a catalog that has thousands of pages or a, um, a, an application like Bavino that has millions of wine bottle labels that yeah. needs to, to recognize. And so it uses cloud recognition to do that. The other side of this, um, you know, we have a, a standard model target type that can be used, uh, you know, locally without any kind of uh, uh, 
cloud-based uh, deep learning or anything like that. So that that is all done locally on the on the user's machine and the, and then as well on the uh, uh, the user's device. Um, but when we train a model target, obviously that goes up to our, our cloud instance and, uh, and is processed there. But the actual resulting model target file itself uh, on the user's device does not use um, you know, cloud recognition uh, when it's uh, in the application. All right. Um, looking at a couple here. Uh, what's the accuracy in millimeters slash centimeters of models targets? Yeah, I, you know that that's a, a common question. It's a, it's a tough one to to answer because it depends on the size of the model, um, the size of the area target, the size of everything that you're doing, uh, the the distance you are away from the object itself. So while we can get very high levels of accuracy. Uh, there's a lot of variance on there um, to uh, um, that that will uh, cause some variation in, in in doing that. I know it's a little bit of a vague answer, but you know we have uh, some guidance in our our Vuforia library uh, documentation that will kind of give you information as as far as uh, that's concerned. Yeah, and just as a general statement for some of these questions coming in that are very specific to the applications that they are building, um, if you have deep technical questions about what you're specifically creating with Vuforia Engine, please feel free to post those on our uh, developer forums on our developer community. So uh, someone on our team can help you there. All right, let's see. All right, I think actually we are at time here, guys. Uh, thank you so much again for coming to the Vuforia Engine session, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your time at Vuforia Live today. Thank you, everybody.